Hello everyone and Happy New Year. In this video, I'm going to bring you one Warren Buffett growth stock that's down 85% off its high that I think makes an excellent investment for 2024 and beyond. So in this video, I'm going to share with you what that growth stock is, why I think it makes an excellent investment for 2024, and why I think Warren Buffett is also attracted to this growth stock. So let's jump right into it. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now. Indeed. So the growth stock that I'm talking about in this video is Paramount Global, Paramount Studios. This is the growth stock that I think makes an excellent investment in 2024. But there are certain things that might trouble investors concerning Paramount Global. So let's dig into the details of the company and why I think that even despite these factors that are headwinds, I think Paramount is an excellent investment. So first, Paramount, as you all might already know, is making the transition between a legacy cable company to a streaming service company, right? That's where the entire industry is going. Consumers prefer to consume their content over streaming connections versus cable connections. That's understandable because it's just so much more convenient. If you have access to Paramount via streaming connection, you can watch your subscription anywhere you go that you have an internet connection versus if you have it through cable, you can only watch it at home or in your office. So the industry is moving in that direction and I don't think that trend is going to turn around. So let's look at Paramount's progress on that front. Well, Paramount Plus has increased revenue 61% year over year in the most recent quarter, and it reached more than 63 million global subscribers. Global average revenue per user rose 16% in the latest quarter, and despite this, Paramount remains the lowest priced streaming service among the major competitors. So there's room for Paramount to increase prices in 2024, which management said they are going to take some pricing action in 2024. So the risks with Paramount is that transition, right? Going from the cable connected service to a streaming service has been messy and that's been true with all of the companies that have done this with peacock with with disney and with paramount so it's no it's not going to be easy and you're seeing this here revenue in the three months ended september 30th for the tv media segment dropped by eight percent year over year to 4.567 billion down from 4.98 billion and in the nine months it fell six percent still the direct to consumer segment is just about making up for that decline right this was about a 400 million decline year over year and the direct to consumer segment increased by about 470 million and the same thing with the nine months that was about a 900 million decline in revenue whereas the streaming segment increased by 1.3 billion the trouble is that while the tv media segment is incredibly profitable the streaming segment is not yet profitable management said it will be by the end of 2024 but it's just not yet profitable and so that's why investors are a little bit concerned about this transition there's a lot of uncertainty they don't quite know what's the industry profitability going to be in the streaming segments right is netflix's 20 percent plus operating profit margin going to be the baseline for everyone else or is netflix the only one that's going to be able to achieve that that big question mark is leaving valuations down for the streaming providers also you may have heard that Paramount's costs have increased or the profitability has decreased. And that's notably from a cost cutting and transition that the company did in the first and second quarter of 2023. You can see here they took some programming charges. Right, let me make that a little more visible. Programming charges of $1.674 billion in the quarter that ended March 31st, 2023, and then another $700 million in the quarter that ended June 30th, 2023. Again, this is common with these media companies. If you've been following my videos on Disney, they've been doing the same thing. 
it's an opportunity for these companies to restructure and take some write downs, which will give it a tax benefit. And all it is, is just the company saying, you know, we were going to expect to make a certain amount of money from our content when it was through a cable connection. And now when we have it through a streaming connection, we don't think it's going to make that much profit. So we need to take a write down. And the IRS says, oh, yeah, OK, that makes sense. And we see your streaming segment is not profitable. So, yes, it's a legitimate write down to take. And so they're capitalizing on that opportunity and taking these write downs. And the company even expands on this in a little fine print here, saying that in connection with the integration of Showtime into Paramount Plus, and initiatives to rationalize and right-size our internal operations to align with our streaming strategy and to close certain international channels, we reviewed our content portfolio, and as a result of the change strategy, we've taken a write-down. And these changes led to certain content being removed from our platforms or abandoned, and the write-off of development cost distribution charges and termination of programming agreements. So all connected to that transition from cable connection to streaming connection, Paramount telling investors, telling the government that this is not going to be as profitable as the cable connection. Well, that's going to be true in the near term, but longer term, I think the streaming industry will be comparable to where the profitability was in the cable industry. I think it's going to be comparable, not because the profitability so much, the profit margins, but because there's going to be an overall increase in content demand. Remember, I highlighted through a streaming connection, it's more convenient because you could watch it in more places. Well, guess what that's going to do? People are going to watch the content more often because now you can watch it on your laptop on your cell phone on your tablet and if you're taking an uber you can watch content if you're on the bus if you're on the train you can watch the content if you're at university which i see often students in the library they're watching content instead of studying which i don't i don't condone but you know they've got access to the content now so they're watching content more often and so that increase in demand the increase in content consumption i think can offset some of the profitability differences between cable and streaming but that remains to be seen and that's just my projections so you can see Paramount's operating profit margin over the trailing 12 months you can see the big decline due to these write downs and strategy shifts but if you look back longer term they were consistently generating operating profitability north of 16 percent before these transitional write downs and write-offs and charge-offs and things started to come into their accounting statements additionally if you look at paramount and their total assets and compare it to their return on asset and i have their five-year average return on asset their return on assets have been increasing meaningfully and the company recently added a ton of assets you could see well i shouldn't say a ton but you could see here they had roughly 24 billion dollars in total assets which increased to 54 billion as of the most recent quarterly update and so if you have more assets and your return on assets are also rising that's a good formula for investors longer term and i've been saying this over and over again with content companies and streaming companies i really like having these assets because these assets are valuable long lasting and they can drive even more assets for instance if you own the content rights to mission impossible like paramount does you can make Mission Impossible 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 14, 18. You could just keep going with that uh, franchise indefinitely so long as consumers continue watching that content. You can also have spin-offs of Mission Impossible. You can create episodic releases and, and so on and so on. And that de-risks the business because you've got proven assets that can drive more profitability and easier content creation and so i like these types of assets i like when companies have these types of assets and they create these types of assets because it generates strong profitability long lasting profitability with a competitive 
advantage because it can't be copied. You own that intellectual property. So that's several of the reasons why I'm bullish on this investment and why I think Warren Buffett also is attracted to this investment. And finally, Paramount Global, after this significant stock price decline, is trading relatively inexpensively at a forward price to earnings of 12.73. So you're getting all of these beneficial factors with an investment that's beaten down, that's out of favor with most of investors, and you're getting it at a relatively cheap valuation. So for all those reasons, I'm recommending Paramount as an excellent Warren Buffett stock to buy for 2024. Thank you for watching this video. I truly appreciate it. I know there's a lot you could be doing with your time and a lot of other videos you could be watching. So I truly appreciate that you chose to watch this one. If you wanna see more videos just like this, hit the subscribe or the like button. They'll both help me make more videos just like this one. Thank you again.